Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. It is day five of the 30 day vlog and yesterday I promised you that I would test all of the brown stuff in the sand on the water box tank and I didn't get around to doing it so today is the day we're going to do that. So we're going to start with that. The other thing that needs to be done, for the longest time this MP40 has bothered me and I've just ignored it but today is the day we're going to fix it because small incremental wins make a big difference with a project like this. So the reason the MP40 is there and looks like that is because unfortunately the glass I think is right on the limit with regards to what an MP40 can be on and it fell off and it put a dent in the wall. So I sort of annoyedly stuck it back on. It's my own fault because you're meant to have uh, two of these stickers on and I only put one on so you can see the one there the original one there So I'm going to secure that back properly today So that's another incrementally small change which has annoyed me for two months And it's really easy to take them off and clean them and everything But I just ignore it purely because I'm gonna have to scrape the sticker off, but I have got some Replacements, so I'm gonna be doing that today But the main thing is as I said the main thing is we need to identify what is on the sand now this is like this is gonna be either like devastating or gonna be amazing. If it's diatoms, great, easy to deal with. If it's dinoflagellates, a bit more difficult. So we shall see. <laughs> so uh, wish me luck. Right now, just a very quick update with the tank before we take the sample. The sand seems to change on a day-to-day -day basis. So you can see that there is a lot more white this side now. Uh, whereas this side is exactly the same. So over here is where I'm going to be taking the sample from. Now there's no real update on the fish. I fed them all today. The flame angel still isn't eating. However, the one thing I did do was I cleaned the acclimation box just so you can see just how fat and healthy the powder blue is. I was thinking about releasing him last night, but I just thought that's my impulsivity uh, try just getting carried away with. There's no reason to let him out at the moment because as I said, he's completely fine and just a couple more days just to recover from being in the copper away from the other fish but you can see look at the belly on him that is one fat fish <laughs> so yeah he'll be in here for a couple more days i'm going to say three more days just so that you keep me accountable and then in three days time i'll release him because last night i actually uh, i took out the door to let him swim out and then for probably for about five minutes he had the ability to go wherever he wanted but he stayed in the box and I just thought, am I doing this because it's the right thing to do? Or am I doing this just because I am not being very patient? And being patient is one of the things that I'm not very good at. But you can see he is absolutely a beautiful fish. It's such a shame that they're so difficult to, uh, to keep when they haven't been quarantined. But if you get one that's feeding and you are willing to quarantine them and the other fish in your tank have also been quarantined, then they're not as difficult as you might think they are. I've got a massive one that you would have seen in the coral farm, which I've had for about eight years. So I thought I'd try my luck again with a small one. Right, so taking the sample is actually really, really easy. I just use these little cups, which I use to ship the corals with, and I'm aiming for an area which doesn't have as much cyano on. I want mostly the brown, and I'll take it a, uh, a little bit from everywhere. And the reason I don't want the cyano is because I already know that it is cyano. It's as clear as anything cyano. So the more of the, uh, the brown goop that I can get into uh, the pot, the better. So as you can see, I've got quite a lot of sand there, but that doesn't matter at the moment because what we're going to do is we're going to stir it and then all of the brown will float to the top and then that's the bit that I take the sample of. Right now this is the sample which I just took out and what you need to do is you need to give it a really really good stir to get it so that all the sand is at the bottom and then anything that which is in the sand that is lighter than the sand will float to the top and you'll create this brown soup. Now the reason we stir it is because the dinoflagellates and diatoms and anything else that's in there is lighter than the sand so it will float to the surface and then it will separate and then land back on top of the sand. So on top of the sand in theory we will, should only have the lighter stuff and the lighter stuff is what we want to test. So it's been five minutes you can see that it started to separate. I could leave it longer than this but this is more than enough with regards to what I need. So all I need to do is take a pipette dip it in to the mid section where the the brown stuff is see this is the problem you start to suck in sand which you don't want you take a clean slide and then all you need to do is put 
a couple of drops on there. Now there is actually sand in that sample, but the easiest thing to do is just take the smaller clear slide and just slowly but surely push some of the sand out. And then when you put the slide down, it's pretty much all. So there isn't actually enough water there to cover the whole of the cover slip, but that doesn't actually matter because you only need to look through a very, very tiny section of it. So let's have a look. Right, that's not that easy to show you because I'm literally holding up my camera to the eyepiece of the microscope, but this is the minimum or the lowest magnification that the microscope offers. And you can see there's all these things moving around. Now that's not a good sign because what I was actually looking for were these like pointy things, which uh, these little pointy shapes, which are diatoms. The fact that these are all moving around really quickly tells me that they are dinoflagellates. So let's look at the next magnification. Right, this is the next level of magnification and you can see them all zooming around. This is why having a microscope is so useful because you can effectively diagnose exactly what you have so you know what you're dealing with. But I'm not overly disheartened because together, as I said, we will deal with this. It might take more than 30 days. In fact, I'm almost certain it's gonna take more than 30 days now that I know this is what I'm dealing with, but it's a start. Now, I will be completely honest with you. I am not overly surprised that that is what we are dealing with with this tank. This tank has been burdened by dioflagellates for months. And I have tried all different sorts of things. I've tried those silicates. The reason silicates work is because they boost the diatom population, which outcompete the dioflagellates. I actually had great success doing that until Aqua. And then when the nutrients hit double zero again, the dioflagellate population exploded. There is, however, a new technique which people are using where they're using a UV sterilizer on a stick and they actually put it into the tank and go over the, over the sand bed because some dinoflagellates will work. If they go into the water column, they will work with the UV sterilizer. If they don't go into the water column at night, they won't work with the UV sterilizer. So people are trying this new technique with varying degrees of success. One of my customers has done it and said it worked absolutely brilliantly. So I will potentially go down that route to see if, uh, if that will fix it. As I said, with regards to this, this project, I'm willing to try anything. Right now, any normal person would have done this because it's like a five minute job. But if anything takes me more than like one minute, I won't do it. The, I have this lovely cabinet here specifically for electronics, but because of how I did the power supply, I actually have to have my MP40 underneath the tank to turn it off. Yeah, right, that's off. So all I need to do is get up here, take off the MP40. That's literally how easy they are to get off and, and clean them. And if you have a spare one, it's even easier because you can just put the spare one back on. And then I just need to use a razor blade to scrape off the glue. And then all I need to do is take one of these, remove the sticker to it, and then line it up where I actually want the MP40 to go, which is about here. Most people would measure this, but I think we all know by now that I don't do anything properly. <laughs> and Cable tie. Huh. <laughs> I put it in the wrong place. Have I put it in the wrong place? Not really, mm, yeah I have. Right, and then you place the wet side back on, which will hold it enough. And then I can just secure it here. And that'll be perfect. And we will pretend that I didn't already do it and not get it right. <laughs> Right, that is it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Please feel free to comment below if you have any questions. If you did enjoy it, why not click that like and subscribe button. It makes a massive difference for me at the moment trying to put out a video every single day. Have a good week, not a week, have a good day or evening, and I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>